what do you think about game two, Anish? Uh, Magnus White, oh, this I have no idea. I'm extremely curious. Like, to be honest, today I expected the Spanish, I expected the Marshall even, I have to say. Um, I did not expect H3, uh, to be fair. I expected some other anti martial or the main Marshall. But um, for tomorrow, I honestly have no idea. Magnus is a much harder player to read. Uh, Ma Magnus is white. Predicting. Is, yeah, to predict Magnus is white is very hard. Like, I've tried it many times. And like he makes a point, like he makes he, he surprises you on purpose. So he does the thinking process that you do, comes to the conclusion that you come to, and then he goes a step further and surprises you anyway. So it's super hard to predict the first move, the second move. And I'm very curious, much more than Magnus. I'm curious to what Nepo will do. Like against E4, will he play uh, the Nider for the Petro for the Berlin? These are the, the three French. things I. <laughs> yeah, but I, no, I don't expect the French. I expect the Nidor for the Petrov and a little bit the Berlin, but mostly the Nidor for the Petrov. And I, I guess D4. Have, okay, great. We, we have, have those players. Conference. Let's go. Let's go. For in room simultaneous interpretation via transmitters and headsets available at our main entrance to the back of the room. Uh, the channels are zero in Arabic, one in English, two in French, three in Norwegian, four in Russian. Uh, also, photographers. This is being filmed by the media in the back, so it's okay to stand for the words I just said, but now it's not okay anymore. So please sit or stand on the sides if you're going to take any photographs. And otherwise, please stay seated throughout so that the cameras in the back can film the entire press conference. And finally, for those of you who wish to ask questions, there are microphones to our left and right. You may use those. Stand there. Do not touch the microphones, and please do not take off your mask. You should be wearing masks at all times. Do not take off your mask when you are asking the players questions. I will begin the post-game interview with a couple of questions, and then it will be open to the media on the floor. First of all, to you, Jan. Uh, when were you the most optimistic uh, during this game? Uh, well, actually, I uh, was very slightly optimistic, uh, uh, you know, during the, <laughs> the whole game, let's say, because, um, I mean, this is quite a curious line from Black, yeah, and uh, that's very, very fine compensation. Uh, despite basically the pawn down in the end game, it's very hard to prove something with White, so I knew that, but uh, I thought, like, okay, maybe I can slowly build up something in the center, but, uh, yeah, I guess logically, you know, this bishop f4 idea is logical just to trade away a pair of bishops. Uh, but uh, it doesn't work due to some, uh, uh, also as well, positional and tactical reasons. Uh, so basically, after I let these exchanges happen, uh, it was never, never something uh, I could really hope for. Yeah, more than a draw, and then okay, after uh, basically after B4, well, probably I have to bring my king to C2 and uh, accept, uh, you know, sacrifice the pawn back, and okay, just accept the draw. Magnus, the same question for you. When were you the most optimistic during this game? I wouldn't say I was ever particularly optimistic uh, in sense, um, you know, in the sense of winning, winning the game. Uh, I was a little bit worried, um, kind of uh, e echoing Jan's sentiment of being a little bit optimistic. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I was, was happy uh, to find this idea with, uh, with B4, but I, I knew that if he um, remained prudent there and just brought his king over, I, I thought chances of winning the game were not, not realistic. Jan, uh, it's your first game in a World Championship match. You're feeling now that it's over. Well, uh, I can't say much. So I was white, and normally we white. You want to, you want to try to win, but yeah, draw is also somewhat a result. But yeah, just was a, I guess a fine game from Magnus. So I don't feel, feel something specific. Magnus, uh, you had the black pieces in this game. A solid result after the first game. Yeah, the result was was solid. Um, I do feel that I was a little bit bit shaky at, at times, uh, certainly things that I, I could have done better, but overall I think the result was fair enough. We open the floor to the media, the press. Uh, you may go to the, to the microphones on the side and begin your questions. Yes. 
Uh, Mike Klein with chess.com. My question's for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, most of your games played against Jan in the past have been in opens or at least in invitationals. This is your first time, of course, playing him in a match. Do you expect that his style will change given that this is a match format? Yeah, I think Jan was already quite a lot more, more solid in, in the candidates. Um, and uh, this, I guess, was a continuation uh, of, of that. But yeah, overall, he's just a very good player. Uh, this is going to be a short press conference if you guys don't have any questions, so please. Um, you said before the the press conference before the first game that you thought you were going to be fired up Magnus when you were sitting at the table for the first game. Uh, did that happen today? Um, if I wouldn't say necessarily fired up, but... Um, um, very concentrated and, and eager to go for sure. This side. Uh, Sarah Please keep from your mask on. Sorry, Sarah Onan from Chess Base. Uh, Magnus, question to Magnus. Uh, today it looked as if uh, you got your kind of a position, a favorite kind of position for you, uh, an end game and a maneuvering, and before that upon sacrifice. So, would you consider this as? A successful, a good start for you. I think the the answer is always nuanced. Um, so, I, I mean, I didn't particularly mind um, the um, the position that I got. Uh, I mean, the opening that I I played is not one you can you can afford to uh, to play if you're not fine being down upon with the <laughs> with the bishop pair. Um, but a after that, it, it does in general feel like um, why well, there's a little bit more more potential to um, uh, to maneuver, and Black usually has to has to react a bit more. Uh, but I was pretty happy with the plan that I, I found eventually. Um, giving up the bishop pair um, to some extent looks very counterintuitive, but I thought that. Uh, I would still have have reasonable compensation with uh, um, with his weakened pawn structure and relatively passive pieces, and at least in the game, I was at least half vindicated. I'm uh, Anders Borghansen from Danish Chess Magazine. Uh, I have a question for both players. Can you reveal a little bit about who are your uh, trainers? Or um, seconds. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, I was asked the same at a starting press conference, so I can repeat that. Okay, the part of the team remains the same from the candidates, and the part of the team has changed. Magnus. Yeah, it's funny you should mention that you're from the Danish uh, chess ma magazine because I can reveal a big secret that my chief um, oh. trainer is actually Danish. <laughs> May I have a supplementary question? Yeah. Um, the opening choice suggests that perhaps also a German is uh, involved on the team. Um, you may speculate as much as, as you want. Uh, I think that's half the, um, the fun of being a journalist at, uh, at the World Championship match. Yes, thank you. Um, Uli Kristianström, newspaper WG Norway. Uh, question for Jan. Uh, how does it, now your first game in uh, World Championship is over, uh, how do you feel? Do you feel relieved? How was it? Well, uh, I feel like you feel after a draw with white pieces. So, I mean, that's a quite usual result nowadays, but still, uh, obviously, you want more. Alexander Signev, TV channel uh, Russia One, and uh, I'll speak Russian for Russian audience. Uh, my question is for Jan. Uh, если можно, Jan, ответьте, пожалуйста, на русском языке. Как оцениваете сегодняшний старт? Насколько он был результативен вот, с точки зрения той стратегии, которая у вас проработана на весь матч? И, в общем-то, бережете ли силы или, или нет? Или в полный рост? 
Ну, беречь силы, наверное, уже будет лучше после матча, да, то есть сейчас -то какой смысл силы беречь. А, ну, нормальная партия, соперник довольно хорошо играл, применил а, довольно интересную идею, я был с ней знаком, но, в общем, мало быть знакомым, надо еще потом а, пытаться ставить проблемы. Ну, нормальная рабочая партия, но, в принципе, когда играешь белым цветом, хочется большего. Еще уточню, а, насколько, скажем так, а, оба спортсмены были сегодня активны, на ваш взгляд, вы и ваш соперник? Ну, всегда вот можно настолько играть активно, насколько соперник позволяет, да, то есть, в принципе, Магнус выбрал дебют э, очень надежный, да, то есть, а сразу, сразу же там, после там, например, за, за 10 ходов получился эндшпиль э, у меня с лишней пешкой, но очень сложно на самом деле что-то э, из этой лишней пешки извлечь, да, то есть там есть некая компенсация и позиция, что называется, ну, динамического равновесия, плюс-минус, да, так что, ну, я думаю, что активность э, какую-то особо никто не проявлял. Thank you. Um, Mike Klein, Chess.com again. This question is for Grandmaster Jan Nepomnishi. We didn't get to, to ask this at the opening press conference, but uh, you're looking a lot more fit. Uh, I'm curious what you did physically training for this match, and was there a target weight you were trying to get down to or anything like that? Well, I, as you correctly mentioned, I was trying to be more fit. <laughs> well, and uh, I mean, some may think that uh, Uh, I was successful at least at this part. So, but I mean, in general, it's an, quite an obvious part of preparation for some major event. Yeah, you got to be, you know, you got to feel well during uh, the whole the whole thing. Yeah, and not to let some up and downs happen. And I guess uh, that's the point. But you know, it's only game one, so uh, hopefully uh, everything goes okay. Ulrich Stock from a German newspaper, Die Zeit, a question for Jan. Were you surprised to see the knight move to a5 in the opening by Magnus? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, this is by all means not the main move in the position, yes, so normally black chooses other moves, but uh, this move uh, was one among I have studied before the match, and uh, this was not a big surprise, I would say. And the move uh, rook from f to b8 was also in your preparation? Uh, somehow, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, from WG Norway again. Uh, question for Jan. Um, how does it feel not to play for the Russian flag? Is it that a, do you feel that that's a problem? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, that's uh, not a good thing uh, to play without your you know, usual flag and your usual anthem, but, you know, during a chess game, you think about moves. And thus again, uh, how long time did you spend for the preparation for the match itself? This is directed to who? Both players. Uh, Sorry. Magnus? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously hard to, to measure. Um, But um, because there's the time that I spent and also the time that was spent by by the team, um, so yeah, I, would, I I don't I don't particularly know. Um, but I would say that it's a very similar amount to what what's been done for for previous uh, matches. Yeah. Well, uh, since I didn't prepare for previous matches, yeah, <laughs> I can only say that it was a lot. Yes. Uh, question for Jan. Uh, today's game, you started playing the match, the first move. This was probably a moment you waited since your childhood. You imagined, you aspired. How did it feel when you actually sat down to play at the first move? Could you keep your emotions and the nerves under, under check? How was it? Well, uh, I think uh, the statement that, okay, I was waiting for this uh, since childhood is, uh, you know, sort of exaggeration because uh, I think I waited for this until the candidate was over. Uh, yep, so I, al I always prefer to do it like step by step. Uh, but indeed, uh, you know, you are normally very nervous until the thing starts. And uh, yep, I mean, once I think the first move has been played, there is no more space, you know, no, no, no more place and no, not a good moment to be nervous, you got to start playing and, uh, well, that's particularly what I do from childhood, yeah, playing chess. 
Any more questions? I've got a question here from the FIDE's Twitter followers, sent in by Matt Beef, and it's for both players. How much do you dread post-game conferences? Do you just want it to be over, or do you use it as a time of rest? Magnus? Um, I think it very much depends on, on the situation. Um, I mean, uh, at the moment with, uh, um, with uh, you know, the, only the first game played and not much has happened, um, it's, it's okay. And I guess uh, a way to relieve the, um, the stress a bit after, after the first game. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a part of the job of the professional sportsman. So I, I think uh, I come here and uh, I try to speak. If there are no more questions, that concludes our press conference for today. Game two will be tomorrow at 1630 at the Dubai Exhibition Center. Thank you very much. Have a great night.